Rogel Zar and an army of escaped Kryptonian criminals from the Phantom Zone threaten all of Earth. Can Superman stop them? Well, let's hop in the pages of Superman issue number four and find out for ourselves, shall we? Alrighty then, so as the comic opens, Zar and his forces descend on Earth. Superman remarks that the last time they fought, they were evenly matched and that he just barely won. It, well, actually, Superman, that's not how I remember it. As I recall, you were getting beaten to death before Supergirl came by with the Phantom Zone projector, but you know, nice retconning. Clark also remarks on how strange it is to see Rogel Zar, someone who claims to have destroyed all of Krypton, someone who says that Kryptonians are a plague amongst the universe to actually be working with Kryptonian terrorists like Jack Zer. Hey now, Superman, if you keep finding all the plot inconsistencies in this comic book, what am I gonna do for the next three to four minutes? Superman fights on valiantly, but he's outmatched, outgunned, and very much overpowered, so much to the point that Rogel Zar hits Superman so hard he ends up going rocketing through the atmosphere back down to Earth. In fact, Superman gets his bell rung so hard it ends up knocking loose a flashback of him and his son. It seems that John the Superboy is all upset about someone who goes unnamed saying a bunch of negative stuff about him and his father. He says that he and his dad are powerful enough that they could go and teach that person a lesson. Super Dad says that that's not how they use their powers and that there's lots of times throughout Superman's career that he has been tempted to do something just like that. He continues used to say that you're not a hero when you're enforcing your will, but that it's only human to feel annoyed. In fact, he gets annoyed all the time. Batman annoys him with all the stuff he does. Why, Superman even says there's times that he wants to pop Batman's head off, and I mean, really, can you blame him? How much kryptonite do you think Batman has in his basement right now? But that while Batman might drive the Man of Steel crazy, he's learned to at least give him five minutes, because it's in that five minutes Batman usually does something pretty amazing that redeems himself. Now, while Superman continues to do all the fighting, it's the Atom who tries to work the scientific angle of why the Earth fell into the Phantom Zone. He's not 100% sure, but what he is certain about is that getting the Earth back to its normal orbit isn't going to be as easy as flipping a switch. And the one idea Adam does have is absolutely insane, mainly let's shrink the Earth down to a microscopic size and move it back much easier. For this insane gamble to work, Superman is going to have to buy the Adam as much time as humanly possible, which means getting beaten on by Rogel Zar a bit more. Superman, learning from his own story of telling his son to trust the good in people, tries to reach out to Jack Zer, saying, Hey, idiot, as soon as Rogel Zar is done killing me, he's gonna kill you too, you're Kryptonian if you weren't paying attention. Jaxer responds pretty much how you think he would. Hey, shut up. For a smart guy, I'm pretty dumb. Stop pointing out the inconsistencies here. Eventually, Adam's plan does work and the Earth is moved out of the Phantom Zone. That's good news, but also bad news because that means it's only Superman and Rogel Zar left to tear up what's left behind. And it's right around there that the comic ends. So that's Superman issue number four, everybody. And overall, I really don't know what to say here that I haven't said in the previous three issues. All this big climactic world-ending stuff is happening in the story, and I just really have no reason to care, nothing to grab onto. They keep implying that Rogel Zar is a more interesting villain with a deeper backstory, but we haven't heard any of that here in this book. Apparently, if you want that, you gotta go to the Supergirl book. It was nice to see Jonathan Kent the Superboy, even if it was only in a flashback. It's it's kind of cool, too, to see Superman know that he's at a loss for more scientific answers and that he's willing to reach out to people like the Atom, A, to give them the spotlight, and B, to show that Superman is pretty collaborative when given the chance. Ultimately, though, I can only give this one a 6 out of 10. I wasn't feeling it as much as I wanted to. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cape Joel, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out some of these other videos I have available from the channel? Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, at Cape Joel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you might also want to check out my Patreon link down in the description. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, everyone, I've been Cave Joel, and I will continue to be making comic book videos that smack of greatness. Bye bye everyone.